Welcome to GreenBiz Studio. I'm Nico McCrossin, Sustainable Finance and ESG Manager at GreenBiz. And today I'm excited to be speaking with Bill Fisher, Managing Director and ESG Tax Leader for the Americas, Europe, the Middle East, and Africa at Deloitte Tax LLP. Hi, Bill. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Nico. Bill, can you start out, start off by walking us through how the Inflation Reduction Act changed the way companies can fund their sustainability transformations and meet their sustainability goals? And can you outline the areas where the resources are getting invested? Sure. So the Inflation Reduction Act is really exciting because it represents over $400 billion dollars uh, of funding for clean energy, type of policy that's just generational, something we've never seen before. And we tend to group the, the various incentives under the Inflation Reduction Act into uh, one of four buckets, what we call our core four. And that those core four groups, as we see them, are manufacturing, renewable energy, hydrogen and carbon capture, or we, as we fondly call them, the molecules, uh, and transportation and fuel-related uh, incentives. Uh, the, and, and the IRA is just the kind of tip of the iceberg. It's not the only uh, uh, the only incentive or, or set of incentives out there for addressing climate change and clean energy and so forth. There are also a lot of government grant programs uh, out there uh, also intended to stimulate investment in energy efficiency, and, and just other investments for reducing greenhouse gas uh, emissions across various industries. Um, the, but at the end of the day, the IRA it just really is stimulating investment in all areas of sustainability with a focus on, on that core four. Um, and, and it's kind of in line with how we stimulate investment in the U.S. through the tax code. Um, I would also add, though, there's kind of an irony to the Inflation Reduction Act and, and just tax credits in general in that, uh, that what we do tend to stimulate economic development through the tax code, oftentimes companies who are eligible for the credits do not actually have the tax capacity to utilize them. And they often partner up with companies called tax equity investors who do have tax appetite to monetize the benefits. And so we're expecting a huge increase in the need for tax equity financing, one, as a result of the Inflation Reduction Act. But the IRA also provides two new uh, mechanisms for monetizing incentives, one of them called transferability, the other called direct pay. Transferability in its simplest form is just the ability to sell federal tax credits to an unrelated party, something that has historically not uh, been available as, as an option for monetizing the credits. The other option, the direct pay, is just basically uh, a refundable credit that's uh, available to a very limited subset of organizations like tax exams and state, state governments. Um, but, but provides for a, a refundable credit to parties who historically would not be able to monetize the, the incentives on their own. So I think that's a, just the, the need to monetize the incentives and the ability to uh, monetize the incentives under IRA cannot be ignored. Uh, very important. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that for me. And you mentioned $400 billion. Now, that is a massive amount of funding. So how can chief sustainability officers leverage um, these strategic tax incentives to help their organizations fund their ESG transformations? Yeah, I think, I think chief sustainability officers are tasked uh, with, with uh, an unenviable uh, responsibility of uh, developing the strategy for how their companies can go to uh, net zero, how they can decarbonize, how they can... Uh, be part of the energy transition and so forth. And I think it's really important that, that the CSOs work very closely with their tax and their finance professionals to leverage the available credits incentives, not just as a result of IRA, but really globally. You know, there are a lot of credits and incentives, grant programs, et cetera, uh, designed to stimulate investment in in sustainable activities to help a company transition. And, and, and I think it's really important that 
CSOs are working collaboratively with their tax uh, departments and their companies working with their finance uh, departments. Absolutely. That makes complete sense now that so much of the funding is coming through these tax incentives. And I just wanted to ask one last thing. Do you have any other actionable tips for chief sustainability officers that can help them uh, with this incredibly challenging job? Yeah, I mean, again, I think it really uh, it really goes to co- being collaborative and teaming uh, across the organization, working with you know, tax professionals, but really starting to get an understanding of the Inflation Reduction Act, the EU Green Deal, you know, various other measures on a global level to understand where they can capture value, right? It, it's, it's very clear that organizations are going to spend billions, if not trillions of dollars addressing climate change and investing in activities that will reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. I think it's upon the, the, the CSOs to understand where they can capture value to offset the cost of those massive investments. Thanks, Bill. You just heard from Bill Fisher, Managing Director and ESG Tax Leader for the Americas, Europe, the Middle East, and Africa at Deloitte Tax LLP.